The Caribbean is often described as the most tourism-dependent region in the world. A titan is described as one that stands out for greatness of achievement, one who is influential in his field. I'm Marlene Stevenson Daly. Welcome to our podcast. We call it Tourism Titans. It's about the movers and shakers of the industry. Men and women who have contributed to its growth and development in Jamaica, the region, and indeed, the world. Our special guest in today's podcast is Mrs. Camille Needham. She's the executive director of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, and has been since her return from the United Kingdom in 1983. And of course, the JHTA is one of Jamaica's most prominent and influential national trade associations and represents the largest foreign exchange earner. She's had many achievements in her time. Her achievements in association management have been recognized by Caribbean Hotel Association, now the Caribbean Hotel and Tourist Association, which selected her as an Association Executive of the Year Large Association category for 2002. In 2013, she received the Prime Minister's Medal of Appreciation for Service to Jamaica in recognition of her contribution in the field of tourism. And just in 2021, she received the Order of Distinction Officer Class for Services to Tourism from the Government of Jamaica. Miss Camille, good morning. Welcome, welcome. It's so good to have you. Hi, Marlene. Good, good to be here with you. Now, let's jump right in to today's podcast. Did you choose tourism or did tourism choose you? To be honest with you, tourism chose me. I got into it, I think, somewhat, well, you could almost say, by a stroke of luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people <laughs> might say accident. <laughs> or some may say maybe. divine. <laughs> well, maybe yes. divine intervention. Yes, I, it might I, have I, been, you know, part I, of the, the plan. I don't know. <laughs> Basically, I heard that the GHTA was looking for somebody through someone I knew. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not apply? And that's what I did. Um, the day when they called me for an interview, I got into this room with all these men. There was Heinz Simonich, <laughs> um, Lionel Reed, former yes. president of the JHTA. Yes. Um, I think there was Bert Wright. Um, there were all the stalwarts whose names, uh, you know, I came across yes. reading the newspapers. And, I mean, I think maybe initially I might have been terrified for two, two seconds. And then I thought, <laughs> come, you know, shake yourself up and do the best you can. Yes. And that's what I did. And they said, OK, got in touch with me um, a couple of days after and said, OK, you're hired. So wow. I just fell into it. <laughs> And 40 years later, you're still at 40 it. 40 years later, I'm still at it and still enjoying it. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your early life because you would have come to the JHTA having had some experience in the industry in, in England and all of that. But just kind of throw back a little bit earlier. Your first name, your maiden name Chin. is Chin. Right. So tell me a little bit now, early life. Where did you grow up? Tell me a little bit about you. Well, family. initially, um, my first seven years mm -hmm. was in St. Catherine. My father had a business there. Mm -hmm. um, we had property, so he did, he did some farming. There was coffee, chocolate, um, bananas. And then um, there was the inevitable... Um, Chinese um, grocery store. Yes, I was about to ask you what about right, the grocery right. store. <laughs> and then there was work that he did for the government um, when work needed to be done there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they were always upgrading roads and what have you. So he mm -hmm. purchased some trucks and he had staff who were working on it and so forth. So he was a jack of all trades. My mother was a school teacher. Um, She's from, or was, because she's now passed on, yes. the famous Nita family. Mm. And, you know, they were the professionals. So she was a teacher. And, um, you know, we, we were 
a happy family of four children. So it, it was great. It was great. So we were there until I was seven, and then we moved to Kingston because my mother said, you know, I mean, education was very important. Yes, for her. Right. Mm-hmm. So she said, you know, my four children are going to be doomed to mediocrity <laughs> if we can't, I can't get them into good schools in Kingston. You know, this is not where it's at. I mean, it's not going to work. So we moved into Kingston. For a few years, my dad stayed with his business until he eventually packed it in and came in to and join Kingston. Us in Kingston. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, which are the schools that you recall? Well, um, prep school was Don Robin Prep. Um, that's located on Don Robin Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, operated basically on the premises of the, the person who started it. Then I went to Queens and then St. Andrew. So that All was right. it. Okay. So tell me now, how did you get to England? When did that come about? And how did that come about? Well, I met my husband when I was a liaison aide doing Carifesta. What had happened is that I worked at the Ministry of Education Mm -hmm. um, after graduating from UWI. And um, I worked on the Commonwealth Education Conference. And then after that, there was the Commonwealth Heads of Government um, meeting. Yes. And then I started doing a number of these uh, conferences and meetings as a sort of liaison aid. Yes. Because I think if you were doing okay, you know, they would ask they would call you, you back. call you back. <laughs> so that is what happened. So when Carrie Fester came back, you know, of course, I was contacted. And, um, you know, I just sort of fell into it. Um, and that is how I met Merrick. He was in charge of the logistics for the event. Yes, yes. And, um, what and anybody is, who knows Merrick Needham right, knows how much of a stickler he, he is, is for precision doing things and right doing it and right. Absolutely. I remember as a young broadcaster having the pleasure of doing the swearing in of Sir Howard Cook as Governor General of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And we had these sessions that would, we would count the steps. Absolutely. The number of steps it would take you <laughs> right. to move from point A to point B because everything had, had to, to be so everything. precise. It had to be timed. It had to be perfect. Oh, my goodness. It was great working with him that way, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's been he's been really outstanding, yes. if I do say so myself. Yes, <laughs> and I believe anyone will say that, just you right. know, having known of his work over the years. Yeah, so that's so, so you went off Carrie Festa right. and ended up... In England? Well, what happened is that, yeah, we decided, okay, fine, we're going to get married. Um, he was um, joining the Commonwealth Secretariat um, because they needed a, a conference officer, yes. and that was his field. So that's what we did. We got married in the UK, and, um, you know, we were there for two years. I got a job when I was there because I tell you, after the first three months, I was climbing the walls. I was so (laughs) bored. And homesick. (laughs) Well, not so much homesick, but just, I mean, you get up every morning and, you know. Have your cup of tea. Have your cup of coffee and have your breakfast. And then, you know, you had to be trying to find things to do. do. And I thought, no, this is not going to work. So what happened is that... um, he was, as I said, working at the Commonwealth Secretariat, and he um, had to attend a function um, that uh, John Pringle was involved in. It may have been a party that John Pringle was having. I don't remember exactly. And so he was there, and they started talking. And, and at the time, then, John Pringle was the minister of... Uh, no, 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 not at no. The time. He was there. I'm not sure what he was doing in London, but... Mm-hmm. And he said, well, how is Camille? And, so, and he, Merrick said, oh, my God, she's so bored. She's climbing the walls. <laughs> and he said, you know, I know somebody who has just lost her, his, um, his right hand. Yes. And, um, okay, you know, call this guy. His name was Norman Bronskill. And he ran a company called Carib Tours. And that company specialized in the Caribbean in the UK, 
And there were three major destinations. There was Jamaica, well, we were the largest, Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados. So that would have provided quite a, a, a leverage exactly. point for you coming exactly. back, yes, right. with that so, experience. So I, um, I worked there for a year and four months, because after that we were coming back. Um, so he had just lost um, the person that he had, so I just sort of stepped into the right. position. And I tell you, it was great. I mean, it was a small office. There were, well, there were two companies. One, he had interest in another PR company. But it was a small office with like 10 of us. Um, and the, the tour operating side had about four of us. So we were a tight-knit family. We worked very closely. Um, I got during that time, I used to do the inspection visits to the Caribbean. So um, there was Trinidad and Tobago. So you got a chance to move, yes. Right. And um, it was a field I was in at the GHT initially, albeit for a short time. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's what I knew, what I loved. And yes. It was great. So you came back to Jamaica, 1983 and went straight into the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, and you have been there at the helm for all these years. When you think back, what are some of the things that would have stretched you? You know, you're heading an association which is comprising all of the hoteliers and People get into business because they want to make a profit. Right. Things are not always good, you know, the economy, the, the, the markets. The, there's so many things that are impacting, but you have to sort of hold the fort down in good times, in not and, so good times, right. in bad times. Right, right. Well, you know, the, the, the beauty of an association is that you work together. Um, we have various committees. First of all, there is our board, the council, mm-hmm. and we have a number of committees that are responsible f- for different aspects. And over the years, um, when there have been issues that we have been concerned about, whether it is the state of the product, um, things like taxation, because bear in mind, we're a trade association. Mm-hmm. We have to be interested in our members' viability yes, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Um, then there is, okay, the whole business of marketing. So we have a number of committees with mandates um, relating to specific areas. Right. And so... And then it's also d- quite diverse in terms of the size of the different properties. It is, right. The properties from very large mm-hmm. to small. Okay, we have um, properties that are... Uh, classified as hotels and those that are classified as non-hotel accommodations. So, you know, we run the gamut. But the the point is this, that by and large, as an industry, um, what suits one group also suits the other. Mm -hmm. So over the years, I mean, what we've had to do is, okay, so we have these individual committees. We work through these committees in terms of um, finding out what the issues are and addressing all right, of them because needs. you have uh-huh. to, exactly, you have to target um, and, and make sure that your responses are suited for that particular group. Um, but over the years, um, you know, I think we have been very successful. Um, there have been a number of threats to the industry. You know, there may have been concerns about the products. Um, you know, things happen. Yes. And in there, this last couple issues. of years with COVID-19. Exactly. With COVID, I mean, we have to really, I mean, jump into gear. I totally mean, unforeseen, I guess. Oh, my God. Yes. But the truth of the matter is this, that everybody worked together. And we, I must say, I mean, the staff, I mean, I hate the staff. We have been fortunate to have had presidents and council members that, I, I don't know what we'd have done without them. You know, they have been outstanding. We sit together. We have the meetings. We will call meetings of the council by itself, and we'll call general meetings mm-hmm. where we get feedback from the members, you know, what, what is happening. And now with technology, we talk to each other all the time. All the time. You know, it's wonderful. You can, you know, jump on the 
<laughs> on a Zoom Don't call. Don't want a Zoom call in no time. At the time. drop of a hat, yes, right. Yes, yes. And so we keep up to date with what is happening. We get feedback from them. We have what is called a general manager's group um, on the phone. So, of course, you're constantly getting information. Yes. And um, that allows us to be able to um, jump on the issues right, right away. And to be, to be responsive and to, be, to the needs exactly, of your various exactly. members. To your credit, you also have a situation where you're changing presidents throughout the years. You right. probably have worked with... Oh, my God. Umteen. <laughs> umteen. In fact, I should have counted them. Yeah, and they're all different personalities, and different they come into the job. They have to, you have to hold their hand and see them through right. that teething stage until they get their footing. And so, right. you know, you've really right. been a facilitator. Yes, but, yes. you know, I have been fortunate because... Um, There have been some that are very seasoned, Mm -hmm. some less seasoned. But uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, we've been fortunate to have had presidents who basically have a very good understanding of the industry and a good grasp of what is needed when they come into the position. And I think passion is also and another word that I, thinking back of some of your presidents, exactly. they have really been very passionate. Some who have served for, you know, double term and exactly. some who have, right. you know, continue to serve. There have been a couple that have come back, mm-hmm. you know, for the second time and so forth. Yes. So, you know, we, we've been we've been fortunate. So call some of the names because I'm thinking of people like Omar Robinson, Godfrey Dyer. Right. Heinz you know, Simonich. Heinz Simonich, which would have been the early days. Um, Lionel Reed. Yes. Um, we have had more recently Nicola Madden, Greg, for example, Evelyn Smith. Yes, I remember women. Evelyn. Um, and then in the early days, you know, there were people who were real pioneers in the industry um, because uh, I'm, I'm trying to think back at some of those very early guys. Martin Storrs, Ferdy Martin and, and so forth. And you had James Samuels at one time? We had James Samuels yes, at one time. Yes, yes. Um, and um, and now we have Clifton Reader. And we have Clifton. <laughs> we have Clifton. Yes, you know it's 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 an interesting field. It's no two days, I believe, are the same. Are the same. And I know for persons who are part of this industry, this is part of what keeps them going. It it, it keeps you fresh. Yes, it keeps, keeps you, you fresh. fresh. And and thinking. You don't have time to get bored. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a little break right now. We're talking with Camille Needham, Executive Director of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association. And it's our podcast, Tourism Titans. Soon come. Welcome back to Tourism Titans. I'm Marlene Stevenson Daly, and my special guest is Camille Needham. Executive Director of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, but she has also been a member and a former chairman of the Advisory Committee for the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management at the University of Technology, Jamaica. She's been a director of the Jamaica Conservation and Development Trust, JCDT, and in her capacity as ED of the JHTA, she is also an ex officio member of several tourism-related committees, and she was... Incidentally, a member of the steering committee for Jamaica's master plan for sustainable tourism development. That's a very, very important document that, yes, it might be now in need of being refreshed, but it has served the industry, I believe, well. She is a three-term president of the Kingston Club of Scal International. That's the travel industry's principal worldwide club. And she served in that capacity from 2006 to 2008. And she has been an executive member of the Caribbean Society of Hotel Association Executives. And, and she was even a member of the board of the Tourism Product Development Company Limited, my organization. I see you from time to time, Camille, representing the industry on the world stage. You know, when you're at these awards functions and you hear Jamaica's name being called for best this and best that and you might hear another property being you know called out for this and you're representing how does that make you feel very good you know jamaica there is something about us um that well that indefinable it if if i can put it Mm -hmm. that way that we're leaders 
um, where people who are assertive, um, not aggressive, assertive, um, we're not afraid to let our voices be heard and to um, give our views. Um, and it, it has stood us in good stead. And I think when I, of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, for example, um, since that's my field, um, and Jamaica's influence in that body mm -hmm. has been tremendous. Um, I believe um, that what we're doing in the UNWTO, for example, it's the same thing. So I don't know. It's something in our genes, something in our blood. Um, <laughs> um, and we're, very, as I said, very assertive people. We're not afraid to give our views and to step up to the plate. And, and basically, I think that's it. Yes. When you entered the industry, the tourism industry, hospitality and tourism industry in Jamaica, I would imagine that there were not many women in executive positions. Uh, and I wanted to ask you if there were any challenges. Did, did that pose any kind of challenge for you? Well, there were women running hotels, mm -hmm. you know, like small hotels and right. so forth. Um, but initially, I think that some people looked at me at the time I was very young and thought, Goodness me, I mean, isn't she a bit young for this job? <laughs> and then but, you're also tiny, so in stature, right, you're, not right, a, you're not an right, imposing person, right. so I could just imagine. Right, so, but to be honest with you, Marlene, um, I found that they were generally um, receptive to me. Mm -hmm. um, there were cases where initially there may have been, you know, somewhat patronizing a couple of cases, but, but by and large, no. And, you know, I think that we... We probably need to give Jamaicans credit because I do feel that where women have reached in Jamaica is really um, amazing compared to some of our counterparts. Yes. Um, we're getting to the point now where, okay, women are accepted in various positions, but in those days. Um, but I never, I, I didn't really get a feeling that, oh, you know, people thought I was a pushover or yes, whatever. Yes. So, no. <laughs> All right. What does Camille Needham do for fun? What do you do to let your hair down? You know, really, I like to travel. Um, I don't do as much now, clearly. But in those early days, from the time that I graduated from university and so forth, I always took the opportunity to travel. And when um, we lived in the UK, um, my husband had some very good friends that um, had known for donkey's years. Mm -hmm. And um, they love French food. Ah. And so, um, you know, we went across to the continent on the ferry with them for a couple of weekends, just driving around. Um, we may see a restaurant. We decide, OK, stop. Let's have lunch there. And yes. It was great fun. Yes. So, I mean, and I've been to various parts of Europe. Favorite um, place to visit. Favorite, favorite place. You know, a anyone we live in the out. UK. And if I, if I... To be honest, if I didn't know the UK, I would have said, and having known it, UK is a place to visit. Yes. The, the history, the beauty, um, the experiences, you know, the people. I, I just love the place. In, in, when we went to France, as I said, we just drive around. Um, we didn't know where we were going. We, each day, we would just drive around and decide, okay, fine. Discover. Stop here for lunch. <laughs> Discover and, new yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. Yes, That can be a lot of fun. Yes, that's, that's a lot of fun. And especially if you're into gastronomy and you don't mind tasting this and tasting that and just Absolutely. sampling the cuisine Absolutely. of a particular area. Absolutely. It can be a lot of fun. Tell me a little bit about some of your other interests. Well, you know, as I said, the, the Skull Club was one of them. I mean, during my presidency, we were very active in organizing activities. Um, the JCDT, um, the truth of the matter is I, I am very concerned about the environment. And um, I, it is very important that we all work at it. Yes. That, that is how I feel. Um, the... When I look at Jamaica, you know, I, I'm glad that steps are being taken now to um, conserve certain things. Yes. 
So I feel strongly about these things, and that's reflected in the, you know, in the in the various activities that I'm involved in. Yes. How do you feel about Jamaica's tourism product? You're in a special place, and you have a very, I think, a wide perspective because you interact with so many persons from the industry. You've you've seen the worst, I believe, of the COVID nineteen pandemic and you've seen us emerging sort of coming out mm-hmm. and trying to 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 breathe again and to embrace mm-hmm. and to market and to get things going mm-hmm. and we have some good reports coming out of the planning institute of jamaica so we know we're making some strides but how do you feel about our, our product generally speaking and i'm talking now about everything the attractions the people the the whole the food, the, the, the entertainment, all of the pieces, the subsectors and the pieces that make up our hospitality and the tourism product. Well, I think we're coming into our own now because we always knew that these things were important and that we could just maximize the benefits from all of these things. But I think that right now we've got ourselves a bit more organized. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have all the different um, um, committees and groups that are dealing with individual aspects of the product and giving focus and, mm-hmm. and special attention to them. And so I think that that is getting us to a point where, um, you know, uh, it, it's, we've, it's not that we have just identified areas that we think, um, you know, can, can do more for Jamaica's tourism, segments that we can develop. Right. But we're tackling each of them individually now. So through the different networks of the Ministry of Tourism on which we sit, yes. um, we have done a lot. Um, when I think of, uh, let's say, take linkages, and we, we've all talked over the years about the importance of, um, first of all, ensuring that Jamaica as a country and, and Jamaicans benefit to the maximum extent yes. from, from tourism. tourism. Mm-hmm. Um, we have identified that tourism is probably the industry where we feel we have the the best competitive advantage. We have everything from fantastic creative people to absolute beauty um, of, of, of the country. Yes, yes. Um, a diversity in terms of attractions. So all the ingredients are there. And now, with what we are doing um, in collaboration with our members and the Ministry of Tourism and all the different elements within the ministry. Mm -hmm. We are giving particular focus and attention to each thing. So it's no longer a situation where, I mean, you know, there's all this potential and so forth, but my goodness, how do we get to them? There is focus being given to each of them. And so that is making an enormous difference. Difference. And I, I do believe that the persons who are operating in some of these linked areas are finally seeing the connection, making that Absolutely. connection that because I'm a farmer over here and I'm doing honey, I, I don't need to be all the way out here. I'm right. very much a part of the industry and what is Absolutely. happening here. Absolutely. Or somebody else who is making dresses or shirts mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. artisans who are sculpting. And, you know, so mm-hmm. everybody needs to see this wider, bigger picture and see how they fit into it. And with this focused approach, I do believe that we will get there. Right, absolutely. And we're combining it. I mean, JPEX, when it started initially, it was a trade show for people who are directly involved in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we have done is widened it. Yes. And now we have linkages and, you know, every opportunity that we get through these various events We make use of them Mm -hmm. to ensure that when we bring visitors to Jamaica and so forth, and and when we bring the trade to Jamaica, we say to them, like, well, we're back to the old slogan. We're more than a beach. We're a country. We're a country. Yes. Finally, what's your one wish for Jamaica's tourism industry? Well, I'm sure I, you have many, think, but, but, but what know, one I, I can you... I think that we're on the right path. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, just to continue in the same vein, what I just mentioned uh, a while ago about making sure that, that every aspect of Jamaican life um, 
is reflected in what we do, okay? So there is, you know, the, the tourism industry, there, you know, there are the beaches, there are the mountains, there are the whatever. But what else about Jamaica, you know, and Jamaicans? There is music. Everybody knows about our music. But come and, and, and experience it for yourself. Yes. We know that, um, you know, we have fantastic um, culinary delights. Oh, yes. Come, go around, um, get more of the hotels doing Jamaican food, encouraging the people who, um, you know, have individual restaurants right. and, and entities that, you know, people can meet along if you're, you're traveling from Montego Bay to the Grill to Kingston to whatever. Um, it's developing all these different elements because, you know, I mean, in the days gone by when we focused on beaches and to some extent on gastronomy, but in terms of what you would eat in a hotel yes. or at a restaurant, but no, go out and experience everything about Jamaica. Yes. And it absolutely blows your mind. The diversity. The diversity. Is... Amazing. It's amazing. And, and sometimes... For a country of our size. Yes. And I, sometimes I go to different places and I'm like, OMG, this, mm -hmm. this is Jamaica. Mm -hmm. This is Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I would love for all our Jamaicans to be able to, to move around, to understand that if you can experience it, mm -hmm. you can understand it a little bit more right. and you can right. love it even more and so our sharing it with the world becomes so much more an easy proposition right right absolutely thank you so much for being my guest today Camille Needham it has been my absolute pleasure and I just want to congratulate you not just on your achievements but for the work that you continue to do day in day out to make a difference in this industry, which is our lifeblood here in Jamaica. Well, thank you very much, Marlene. And let me just say that I have enjoyed my time in the industry. Um, I, I, first of all, I love the people. Um, you know, what I've said here about the product, you know, it's, you know, it, it just blows your mind. And I think that the way that we are working together, all elements of the industry, we share a common vision for where um, Jamaica should go. We all agree that, you know, we have a competitive advantage in the industry because of the diversity of the products. Yes, yes. And um, everybody is working in tandem. And, I, 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 you know, I, I re it's gratifying um, to see that. Great. Thank you so much. Many, many blessings. And continue to do what you do and to do it as well as you do it. Thank you, Marilyn. God bless. My special guest inside the Tourism Titans, Mrs. Camille Needham, Order of Distinction, Officer Class. Thank you so much for listening to Tourism Titans. We welcome your feedback at let us know at tpdco.org. Leave us a comment, share, like, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at tpdcoja. I'm Marlene Stevenson Daly. See you soon. Mm -hmm.